Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, North Light Images, and this video is about some historic stuff connected with photography. Why did I think of this? Two things really. It's uh, this Saturday, 25th of March 2023. It's 20 years since I published my first review on the North Light Images website. Well, that's nice. Um, I'd at the time thought it might carry on for a few years, but um, who knew? Um, secondly, a well-known website which had been gone several years by the time I published that, DP Review, has just announced it's being shut down by its parent company, Amazon. Um, and that's patently for financial reasons. Um, I'll come back to DP Review and things about forums and discussion stuff and some some ideas and things. I do welcome comments on this as well because I know a lot of people are quite miffed by the fact that DP Review is shutting down. But anyway, um, what about 2003? Yeah, a long while ago and probably well before some people were born. Uh, but um, it was just before I actually set up North Light Images as a commercial photography company. Um, I was still unsure what I was doing at the time, and um, these these things reflect the fact that at the point at that time it was still photography was still very much a hobby of mine. The very first review reviewed this thing, the print fix. Now the color vision print fix. Color vision became data color. Uh, the print fix was a small USB powered scanner, about that big. Uh, so yeah, much smaller than that. Hence the roller next to it. I see there that it was indeed seven inches long. Um, it was a basic scanner. You printed a test target. You put it through, and it allowed you to produce printer profiles. Now, at the time, there was nothing like it in terms of um, cost that you could get hold of. There were no easily available print profiling systems. Um, it was a few years until I started looking at the more advanced stuff, but it started with this, the print fix. What did I think of the print fix? I, I put some links to the actual reviews, so you can have a look at the reviews and that, and see what you think of uh, that. Uh, the thing I notice is how short the initial reviews were. They've got longer over the years as I've sort of added more detail into them, but it worked. However, it didn't work well enough in many respects. So it's a bit like any scanner based profiling system. And I get asked about scanner based profiling systems quite often is that it's a good idea but in the implementation, the actual working of it, it just doesn't work so well. And it's due to the limitations of the scanner. It doesn't record enough spectral information to be able to build good quality profiles. So some papers, it worked very well. Other papers, it just didn't work very well at all. It was soundly hammered by, I remember, people on DP Review and Luminous Landscape, another big site at the time, which is also not what it was, but it was soundly hammered by the experts and people who knew about this stuff. And I thought, well, no, how many of these experts have actually uh, saying how useless it, is, useless it is, are just going on the fact, well, I assume that it must be useless because of what I know about systems. And that, in a way, has led a lot of my articles and reviews over the last 20 years is taking a tilt at some of those, some of that perceived wisdom. Um, recently, I did a video on optimal print resolution. For years, and certainly back then, it was assumed that uh, you had to send your print resolution at a certain optimal value to get the best results when printing. Well, things have moved on. Uh, that may have been true then, to some extent. Now, it seems it most certainly isn't. But anyway, that was the first review, the print fix. Um, I don't actually have this little scanner anymore. Um, it, uh, it went on eBay when I had a big clear out to make this space, I have enough space here to do the videos. Um, but yeah, somebody's got it now and um, I hope they've been able to make some use of it. That was first review of looking at. First big article a bit later that year uh, was actually using this film scanner. Uh, this is Canon FS4000 US uh, film scanner, has a SCSI and um, USB interface on it. It still works. It's still a good film scanner. Um, I've got all the attachments and everything for it. It sits 
out of the way, out of dust and everything, and it's there. It's a good quality film scanner. Um, but I did an article about using the film scanner as a microscope, and that is a wing of a bee. Um, there was a you know, dead bee found on a, a windowsill somewhere, and uh, that is its wing. Um, what's so fascinating about that, you'll say? Well, back in 2003, this was the sort of stuff that got interest. This particular article was slash dotted. Um, you'll have to look that up if you don't know what it means. This article was slash dotted and in an hour had over 150,000 visits. Still one of the peaks on the website in terms of instantaneous interest was looking at pictures of this and salt crystals, sugar crystals and a few other things um, using this film scanner. Now, back then, I was using an... I was using this Olympus E20 I'd got off a friend of mine uh, to try out. Um, that was the first sort of proper digital camera I used. But the first camera I used when I decided I was going to do photography professional was this, the Canon 1DS. And I got this at the end of 2003. And that was when I was looking at setting up the business, the photography business itself, which has been going ever since, had been running a while. But uh, the company actually is existed before the, uh, the all the stuff that was done here. So that was that. Printer reviews, something I'm probably known for now. I started that in 2007 or thereabouts and have done lots of printer reviews, lots of stuff about printing ever since and color management. The color management and the printing stuff in a way go back to this printing pictures like this and printing scanned images from here. This was where my interest in black and white came from and that went through this and also that. Curiously enough, uh, quite a bit of my black and white photography I did using the Olympus OM2N a while ago and the 24mm lens I used for a lot of things is the one that's on the EOS RP here at the moment. Actually, I'm shooting this video. I'm using it as an adapted lens. It's still going. So, there was also uh, a strong element of Canon rumors on the site. Um, I set up the original rumors pages in about 2004, uh, long before Canon rumors existed or any of the other rumors websites. I carried those on for a few years. In fact, they're still there. I do maintain them because uh, I know people check out stuff, but I really don't do much on it now. Um, it's really... <laughs> And we're going to come back to DP review here, because if you look at the numbers, um, I could look at visitor numbers for our site and visitor numbers for our site very closely follow DSLR sales. So they rise steeply from 2003 up to perhaps 2011, 2012, 2013 or thereabouts. And then we get the precipitous decline as more and more people start using uh, camera phones. Initially, the decline hits sales of compact cameras. Then the decline hits sales of DSLRs and cameras in general. Um, it is still declining. Um, if you look, if I look at the visitor numbers we've had for, say, the rumors section of it, I can see it clearly matches it. There just aren't the new number of new cameras and bits of kit coming out these days. Um, economics is different, pricing is different. There are all kinds of changes, but underneath it all is the fact that we've got a change. You've got you know, people using phone cameras for everything. Um, that changes a lot. It changes what sort of people are interested in photography. Now, I know from looking at demographics of how when we run the business and look at the YouTube channel and that, that uh, what I do here appeals to older people. Um, that is people who will have been through all of this sort of stuff. Now, it doesn't mean I wouldn't like it to be appeal to younger people as well. And, you know, photography will carry on in various ways, whatever it happens in the way of AI powered software and other similar things like that. It will happen, but it will change. One of the reasons I've been writing articles about the business side of photography uh, and recently doing videos about it is because I've seen this change over the last 20 years. And I'm trying to say, well, look, 
this is what's happening. If you're thinking of getting into this now, these are the things you ought to look at. Some things don't change. Fundamentals of business, the need to make a profit, the need to appreciate what your customers want. You sell what your customers want. You don't sell what you can produce. Um, the classic thing I get asked all too often is where can I sell my photos? Wrong question. You should be asking my photos. Who might be interested in them? And if you can't answer that question, you're unlikely to sell many of them. But anyway, that's that's how it's done. I started up doing these videos in about August 2020. I have to thank once again somebody from Canon for twisting my arm into doing it. First video was the Canon Pro 300 printer that I had a look at. And as I, I was uh, convinced to have a go doing videos, I was skeptical. I've never greatly liked video, but you know, I'm happy to admit I was wrong. I probably should have done these a few years before, but that's, that's neither here nor there. So there we go. Um, we got 20 years. What about DP review? Well, uh, like many people, I was um, quite shocked in a way to hear that DP review was closing and it's something I've been a member of it and sort of looked at the forums and the articles and the camera reviews I've looked at for many years uh, before I set up any of this stuff. What was happening to it? Well, 2007 DP Review, uh, in what I'm going to say was a pretty shrewd move, was sold by the person who set it up, Phil Askey, uh, to Amazon. And a lot of people thought the same. What does Amazon want this for? Amazon wants it to sell cameras. Amazon wants it to make money. Now, it was run at arm's length, but it always had the sword of overall camera sales hanging over it, I'm going to suggest. And if you look at the forums in recent years, the number of posts on it have declined. Now, what about forums? Um, well, some people like forums. Um, unfortunately, in many ways, Facebook has decimated many previously successful uh, forums. Facebook is a horrible place to go. I mean, I know some people like it, but I'll have nothing to do with it. I've looked at it. I just got no time for it. Um, I don't like the way that I'm so obviously a product uh, that, you know, that they are out there to make money. I just don't like Facebook. So get my my pet bias out of the way there. But it shows that things change. Um, nobody's going to be interested these days in the fact that I use a film scanner as a microscope. You know, that's those days have gone. Likewise this. Now, I've got this, um, I've got this out of storage, this E20, and um, I may well take it out sometime and actually use it again just to see whether it is usable in any way. And also what you can get from five megapixel images that comes in. It will shoot raw. Um, I've got a, still got some cards in it and batteries and uh, it works. So we'll have a look at that. But, but those forums, there's a lot. I'm, I've already been asked several times, Keith, why don't you set up some forums on Northlight Images to cover printing, colour management, things like that? Well, we did seriously consider it a few years ago, but we looked into it. And the finances of running forums, you need to cover hosting costs and various things like that. It's not a trivial matter to set up the website for doing it. Um, and we certainly couldn't afford to pay someone to do it, which means that myself and Karen would need to do the management and the administration of it. And having been partly involved in the past in some uh, forums uh, in moderation and administration, it is an utterly thankless task. You will always get people who insist that their right to say whatever they want supersedes everything else. Um, yeah, uh, all of the problems of social media you can see in forums 15, 20 years ago. And before that, if you know the history of the Internet, you've only got to look back at Usenet and you know, sort of mailing lists and things like that to see that there is always a lot of tension between people who want to say whatever they think and people who think, well, sometimes you shouldn't. Um, now, I have no desire to try and square that circle. Um, it's a tricky thing. Here on uh, the YouTube videos, I've got control over the comments and that. And if somebody wants to discuss politics, they can mention it, but I will delete the post pretty sharpish. Um, I make no apologies for that. It's my channel. 
my house, my rules in that aspect. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. Um, but if you want to have a successful forum, you can't really take that attitude over to it. Well, you can a bit, but you're just not going to get many people. And if you look at many photography forums now that were perhaps even five, ten years ago were quite busy, you will find they are just empty echoing halls with one or two posts, a few people making regular posts and nothing happening of it. I, I've got a LinkedIn group that I set up a few years ago uh, specifically to cover uh, black and white photography, aspects of black and white digital photography. It has seven and a half thousand users, um, or you know, seven and a half thousand members, I should say. Very few of them seem to use it. Um, I put a link to it in the notes if you're interested in it. But that is strictly run on the view that it is, you know, that it is a forum for discussing things. It's not a forum for posting pictures and stuff like that. So, uh, I've got some. I put some details on that. So, yes. DP Review for it's a tremendous archive in some ways, all the articles, all the reviews, even once you filter out a lot of the sort of common repetitive stuff, there is lots of useful information in all the forums and it's all been indexed by Google. You can find it, you can find information on it. And it would appear that Amazon, because it cost them for more money to sell DP Review than it would to actually just turn the switch and just close it completely, are not even, as far as we know at the moment, considering archiving the content. Terrible loss. Um, I just have a dislike of, you know, closing that is like burning down a library because, well, you can't afford to run it. So if you can't afford to run it, nobody's going to pay a visit. So there you go. You know. um, yeah, that's Amazon for you. Mm, yeah, well, whatever. But Keep an eye on what's happening on DP Review. Um, I will be, I've posted in the printing forum there for many years uh, with lots of information and stuff on it. And one of the problems is it's an area where when people email me with questions and their questions about printing, maybe on a Windows PC, and I don't have a Windows PC in the building, haven't used one this century. My answer is rather than just say, well, I don't know, is say, well, ask here and DP Review closing has meant that uh, you know, my sort of go-to place where I would suggest people ask things has vanished, uh, which is unfortunate. But anyway, enough meandering on that. Um, I will be doing the articles. I'm going to carry on. I would never in 2003 have thought that uh, my own website would outlast DP Review, but it has. Um, and if you've got any questions, please do ask. And please do yeah, comment. Use the comments of this. Um, so it is you know, about the videos. And I'll put a link to that black and white stuff. So if you've got an interest in black and white printing, digital black and white in general, have a look at there. Um, I'd love to re rejuvenate the, uh, the group. Um, it's got lots of people in it. And I'm sure some of them have just forgot it's there. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope that's been of interest and um, thanks. Oh, and please do subscribe to the channel. I, I always forget that bit. Cheers.